I, I decided to do a quick video. It's my friend Gary calls them pop-up video on laying out a basket. How do I do that in such a way that I don't waste my materials? So, I know with this one, first of all, my basic thing is find the center. There's the center of the finger. Put it down. I am putting down three long pieces of braid. I have a 10 by 10 D handle here. And I'm going to lay that straight across. That is my, oops, I guess it was a little high on there. That is my second piece of material. Now I have a 17 inch piece. These are 7 eighths, by the way. This basket is 10 inches inside, and it'll turn out to be about 12 length. I can't help myself. Every basket grows a bit in my world. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why I did what I did. So let me finish laying this out. And the first time I make a basket, there's a little curve to that, and I didn't like that. So I bent it. Um, the first time I make a basket, I think about how high I went the sides. And the sides on this, I went a little above three inches because we're gonna put a pie in it. We gotta get the thing out without turning it upside down. So let's make a pie basket. So I decided I was going three inches, say three and a half, just in case I change my mind. And then you always, or in this basket, you have to add an inch and a half to, to bend at the end. You always add something, but in some baskets, if you're weaving with one inch, then you're gonna be adding two or two and a half inches. But where our top rows aren't going to be that wide. So I lay out every basket the same way. It saves me from having to think about it. So we have an under, under, under. Now, should you happen to notice, this is long, short, long, short, all the way around. So that kind of keeps you honest. If you get too long, you're in trouble. You need to go back and rethink that thing. So I'm just pulling these over because I know my basket will grow. I'll be able to carry a pack of potatoes in it. But the key here is to follow the pattern. But first you have to, you make the first basket and then pay attention and write it on your pattern. That's what I do. And it saves me quite a bit of material. I mean, I, I caught 12 pieces, three inches shorter than the other pieces. So that starts to add up after 40 some years. Besides, I just don't want to sweep up all the money I spent off the floor as scrap. And as a basket maker, you own the scrap. The customer owns the basket, you own the scrap. So here we have our perfect little, as perfect as I'm gonna be, base. I try to make the holes the same size, and I try. I really do, but get what you get. Okay, finger in the corner. Good crease all the way around. You guys know this story. You don't need me to explain it to you. Crease, crease. Okay. Now the reason I'm doing this is your first row of weaver has to follow the edge of the basket and if you don't have a nice crisp crease it's going to be willy-nilly all over the place and things will start shifting. We do not want that. Now I'm going to use a 5 8 reed and I really don't want to start on the, I don't want any more thickness. This handle's bulky enough. So I'm going to weave with the 5 8 There's two rows of 5 8 two rows of half inch and a row of three eighths under the rim. And I don't want to start here um, with on this side because it'll make it even bulkier and the handle's bad enough. So I'm going to turn this and I'm going to go under, under. This is just the easiest way of weaving it. First row you can imagine. And tuck it. Now the way this basket was set up, I always set my basket up this way. There's only one exception. And that is so the piece here in the base, this piece, 
is next to the rim on the inside so that my outside row, the first one, which is the hardest, is going to be on the outside. I'm not trying to poke this piece of material through there. That's very intentional on my part. I also use odd numbers most of the time so that things work out that way. So we're holding it close to the edge that we bent. That's the goal in this first three rows of basket weaving. You hold it close to the edge and I use all my fingers that line, you know, make them work. So we come to the end of this, it's called stop woven. So we're going to lift this up and go behind the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one we cut. Now we could have cut off at the second one if we didn't have a lot of material, but I like to go to four. And I like that to come over as far as possible because something shifts, my piece will pull out and I hate that. So we turn the basket and off the body and grab another piece of meat. And this one, now you see I've lifted up the ones I want to go behind and I'm inside. Can you imagine doing this on the first row? I don't think so. Also, I start started my first row here. So I'm going to start my second row on the next clockwise side. And then turn the basket on the body, go around the corner, lifting up what I want to weave behind, gently shaping the corner. Next, same thing until I put on all my rows. So we come back to where we started and the clothespins are in the way. Clothespins are great until they're not. And they're in the way, they must go. So I've got everything in place. I can hold it with my finger. I don't need that pin. I'm going right now. This is gonna hold that row before now. It's really handy that way. So we have this, this. I pick up my baskets and weave them in my lap as soon as I can. But first, let's adjust, make some we always, uh, because then I can look at each side as it comes along and I can make adjustments. See, I, I like to be as far over here as possible, but uh, but I hate to have to trim it. So it's a, it's a learning thing. And trim to here, if I had cut it to here, it might stay, it might not. And I, oh, don't like to fix things. So there we have the bits. And I want to go back and just make sure that, yeah, that looks pretty good. So we started last time here. So we're going to start here this time. You don't want all the thickness of the overlap getting in the way. So we use a different side every time. So you can only start a piece at most every fourth row, fifth row is it on the same side. So this goes pretty easily because I'm just looking at what I have to go under. I don't care what the basket looks like. I do, but I'm not, I'm not thinking over, under. I just think under, under, under. And how does this side look? It looks good. I pull this in a little bit and off we go. If this had been too tight or too loose, I could come over here and snug it up a little bit. Oh, I'm only doing two this time, not four. And I know I only have a couple short pieces, so I'm going to show you how I add on, because that happens too. I have lots of odd pieces here, so I'm going to use them. So I start as far over on this side as I can, because it's easier to turn it forward that way. Now you know you're in the right place when you only have one more piece to weave and it's going to be over that short one. Or that the one more piece you're going to weave is under that long one. If for some reason you've made a mistake, this is the time you can fix it. You can just add an extra row if these were off. Just short distance around the corner. So I'm going to add this little bit. There. Okay. There we have it. Now look, I put a 3 8 under the rim because I know I'm going to use a 5 8 flat on the rim. And I want something wide enough under the rim so that I can set my round piece on top. So this is our fifth side. We're back where we started. See right there? That's the row we started on. You notice 
I'm not going to have to cut a lot off. I'm going to cut some off, but I'm not going to cut off three inches. And that's the difference in the length of these two pieces of basket material is three inches. So on 12 pieces, we've saved a yard. Believe it or not, that adds up to a lot. So there we are. Now, I'm going to run around and bend these over. You'll see that when I do, I'm pretty close in there. Look how close I came. And if I want to, I can use my snips. Quickly run around the edge of the basket. I did add a little bit just in case this basket they shifted. I always, I always add just a little bit. Next thing you know, I've got this monster. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tuck these in. No, I've shown you how to touch before, but let me bend and crease, bend and crease, always do that, roll it, and poke it in there, tuck it, this is called tucking. Now what you didn't see me do, and I just do it so automatically, is I want the, the center to be a little higher so my basket sits on feet, and the way I do that, is, and the way I pack, is to put my thumb under here and pull. That pack pushes the rows down and pulls the center up. Now the corners I don't pull on quite as much because those are the feet. See this one, you may not notice that, but that's what I'm doing and that's why. Fingers, love my fingers. They work so well, but I don't want to get inside and look at this, so I am in the habit of using my nail, this finger, Push that open, it makes just enough of an opening inside. Watch. So I'm pushing from this side and there. It just speeds the process up. And everything you do if you're making baskets to sell, your time is what you have to sell. So there we have it. Let's chop these off. I always have my tools against the basket this way. I hold the base here, the shears out in front of me. I don't ever cut this way, because you see my, my snips can't get close to the edge, but if I go in here, and that's another time saver, time saver. So we'll be back shortly with a rim. Well, it's time to put a rib on our pie basket with the 10 by 10 D handle. So I have 5 8 flat oval. So what I'm going to start with is a taper. As soon as I pick my basket up, I put a taper on the top for my overlap. Because I don't want a lot of bulk in my rim, I'm going to set this whole thing over so it's going to start and stop here where there's less material right now. So pin my top securely to the rim very tight. I want it to be tight. I never want this to happen because when I come to look around the corner to try to lace this, I've got to pull that in. So this has to be laid out and very tight. It's worth taking the time to do this now as opposed to fighting with it later. Around the basket, just sitting on that top row. See, there are, you may see some mildew on my baskets. I had a an event and someone forgot to dry the pieces afterwards. Of course, it rained for three days and then it rained afterwards. So we had some pieces that got a little spotted. Since I paint all of my baskets, that's not a big deal for me. So the other thing I've learned, and it's taken me years to learn this, is that when my lacer comes over the basket, it's going to come across right here at this angle. So I'm going to trim this at that angle so I don't have a little piece sticking out that could catch something that was that's put in the basket now again we're going to taper gently boy my blade went go fast I love the fact that you can make baskets with some very simple basic tools that you probably already have in your house now for the outside rim I have a piece of probably number four round reed. It fits most of my gaps really well. 
I'm going to switch sides. I never do anything on the same side where something else is happening. So we have a handle, a handle, a rim, a rim. So there. And taper the top. Get that down. Again, just don't need all that bulk. It's not going to add to the value of the basket. It'll just make it look clunky. Start, I'm going to put this here. And again, I know when I come over this way, um, on this side of this piece, that that's where my lace is going to land. So, I set it up. So I'm pinning it there. I'm starting my pinning there. Around the corner. Tight, tight. You're going to be pulling these with a lacer. You don't want to have to pull harder than necessary. This sits right up on what my friend called the knife's edge. That round reed. It's handy. Makes the basket look more finished. I discovered that in the early 80s on a basket made by natives the turn of the 1900s in New Hampshire. And they had used a piece of round reed. And I thought, oh, that looks so much more elegant. Finished. So I did it too, and I've done it on every basket. Except some, unless I'm really trying to reproduce something to look authentic. So I cut this to match, you know, butt these up. No room for overlap in there. And this one we said was going to come across here. Cut that. Taper this. Overlap and now a lacer. Make sure it's long enough. I do not like two piece rims. I do not like using two pieces to lace, if at all possible. So I keep my longer pieces for big jobs and use the short stuff anywhere else. So I want to start right here at my outside overlap, and the reason for that is that if I come to the end and I push some slack around it, it'll happen, it can slide right under. So I'm conscious of that ability and I don't panic if I find a problem halfway through. I push this down inside my basket just like it's a habit I've had for 40 years. I don't know if it's the best way to do it, but it's the way I do it. Down inside the basket, just like we did when we did the bends, or wrap around here. I know my baskets because of the size of the materials I use. It takes roughly two times around a basket. That will be plenty and there's no sense dragging all the rest. So this is, I use very best. I hoard materials for rim. It's harder to find for, for lacing the rim, uh, lacing the rim, but I keep the best I find. I keep it aside and I use it. I like quarter inch and seven millimeter. It lays well. Um, they're probably my favorites. I use three eighths if I have to for big baskets. Otherwise, you have the skinny little rim on top of a big basket. So this is what I'm doing all the way around. It's going to go quickly. Pull very tight, and when I'm pulling. See, there's a little loose I mentioned. Well, I know where that'll go. I'm right-handed, so I pull with my right hand. I'm gonna tuck this right here so I don't lose the good side of it. And I pull, pull, pull with my right hand. Pull, pull, see, and it's the proper angle. Also, push with my thumb. And that pushes it into place. I like my rims to be really tight. That's what holds the whole basket together. I remember that from basket weaving class in 1981. So that's what I'm looking for. That kind of tight. I X in front of the handle. I go in front of it. Pull. Pull it. Nicely. Then I'm going to go back. Like I'm rethinking it. I saw this on an old basket also back in the 80s and it kept the handles from wiggling even though this is a d handle i still had the habit i like the look i've continued to do it when i started basket weaving there were very few books on how to make baskets so i looked at old baskets 
I tried to figure out how they did it. And my students are always asking me, how do you get yours so tight? Well, just pulling alone won't do it. But pushing, even pushing so hard that you're pushing that down and holding on. Now, in order to keep that, if you wish to put a rim on it, that will help. And these clothespins are fantastic. They're made by a lady and a carpenter on Etsy. I buy seconds. I bought hundreds of them. I use them in all my classes because they work and they're the best. Wire clamps can rust. I've had a lot of problems. Old clothespins used to be good, but since they went overseas, not so much. Now you see I've got a little bit of a gap and so that's going to come out right here at this overlap. That's what overlaps are good for. You can get elastic on a pair of pants. Take up the slack. Okay, I'm going to whip around this basket and I'll be back in a minute to show you the other details. So one of the things I wanted to mention to you, I see people weaving a lot of different, or lacing a lot of different ways. And I find the best way to do it and the easiest way to remember it is the base goes on your belly. And I'm a lap weaver, so that's why I sat back and you didn't see me for a few minutes. But if you have this base facing this way, you can see what's going on and you can pull at the angle I suggested. I find it difficult to do it any other way, to reach across. I just find this works the best, it goes the fastest. So we're back at a, back at an X again. This will keep even this D handle from wiggling. Yeah, pull, pull, really use your muscles. I do not recommend weaving a basket and throwing them all aside and rimming later. First of all, you have to wet them enough to get a good shape. And second, ugh, nothing harder than rimming a, a dry basket. So do them as you go. Do three baskets and rim three baskets. You'll thank me later. The bigger the baskets, the faster you get to that rim. See, we have a little bit of, we've got a little bit of space here. But because we're starting and stopping at this overlap, we have the opportunity to push that right underneath. So you have that spot anyway. You're going to have a place that you start and stop. You may as well be here where it can do you some good. And I use my fingernails instead of my tool. I usually use a bent tool. But now I've used my fingernails. And I can tighten up anybody's basket including my own, because as I was going around that corner, I got a bit loose. And still, corners will do that to you. I don't go for perfection. Now, you remember when I said that I cut this outside rim that way? Watch how this lands. Right there right at the angle. So if you pay attention to that, you know where to cut this off. Now, if you do not want to see it, go in with a knife afterwards very carefully. I'm just rocking this. I'm not cutting because I don't want to cut my finger. Bleeding on a basket is very poor taste. Now, ending is another thing I have bad old habits about, but this is one that I happen to like. Um, I open up make an opening between my ribs, put that in, go back. Now I just made an opening and loosened things up and loosened the beginning of that pull, very tight. It pulls those rims together. I love my little side cutters. If you don't have them, a regular old pair of scissors will do. Did for me for 40 years. I just got the newfangled stuff recently. And the other thing we had discussed was the inside. See my overlap? It's hiding right there underneath this piece instead of having a piece poking out over there. So now is the time you shape your basket. This is a pie basket. I tend to square this one a bit more. That's why if I've laid it out on a mat, I'm confident that it will be fairly close. 
I push the center up so it's not rocking on that center. It's not rocking at all. If it were, I'd push down the sides that are lifting up. That works for me. And there you go. My 10 by 10 pie basket. If you're visiting a friend, fill it with something good and leave the basket behind. She won't let you out the door with it. I made also an eight inch basket, which is a good companion if you're shipping this. One of my customers loves the eight inch. So I made that. I had some eight inch handles, she'd seen them. She loved them and asked me to make some more little eight inch baskets. And these are lovely. They're made out of seven eighths. There are 10, piece, uh, 10 pieces all together. They are 14 and 16 inches long, the shorts and the longs. And for shipping, it takes no more space if you add that one. But what I do think is that this handle is a little expensive. So I tried something else. Because this basket isn't overly bulky, I used a flat oval, a stiffer piece of flat oval as a handle. Fits in there, does the same job, saved you two plus dollars plus shipping for that. And it will do the same thing if you're filling it, uh, if you're painting it. I'm gonna paint my baskets, see all that scrap, but I used it up, a little bit of bleach, and in the pot she went. So this basket has a 10 by 10 D handle. It has 13 pieces that are 20 inches long and 12 pieces that are 17 inches long. This is an 8 by 8 D handle. The base is 8 by 8. The pieces are three long, which are 16 inches, four short, five short, sorry. One, two, three, four, five short at 14 inches. Good use of scrap. Two rows of five eighths, a row of half inch, and the three eighths under that rim. You could also use a stiff five eighths for an inside rim if you had it. Use those materials. If you found information you can use, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, I have a lot to say, uh, but I've had a lot of experience behind those words. This is simple, basic basketry. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found something you can use. Have a great day, and happy weaving.